Hey everyone, welcome to Game 5D. In this video, we are going to learn how to add controller and hand tracking to our VR app using Meta's new building blocks. We will also look at the earlier steps developers used to take to enable the controller and hand tracking and compare to the old process how much faster the implementation has been using the new building blocks. I will also show you few of the issues you might face with and where to look at for resolving them. So I hope you all are excited as I am. Let's get started. Okay, let's open up the same project we had. Uh, we have the same OVR camera rig with the same setup component and uh, same settings where the OVR manager tracking type is set to floor level. The only change I did was to transfer the contents into a non URP project because I was facing some shader issues in the newer building blocks and that was not rendering the hands in the URP project. Alright, let's see uh, the process of adding the controller, the OVR controller in the older way. So to do that, we have to first search for the OVR controller prefab, which is now moved to Meta Core SDK uh, prefabs folder. Next, we have to expand the OVR camera rig left, left hand anchor and right hand anchor. So these transforms are provided by Meta, uh, where we have to uh, keep the left hand and right hand components a child of these anchors. So let's drag and drop the prefab onto left hand controller anchor and right hand controller anchor. That should make them the child objects. So if you click on the OVR controller prefab, you could see the OVR controller setup script, which handles the uh, setting up the or enabling the correct model from this list, from this available list based on your uh, headset. So for example, I have a quest 2. If I click on the quest 2, you should see it contains the quest 2 controller model. Also it contains the, an animator component on it and that animator takes care of playing the button uh, animations and the joystick animations. So if I open up the animator controller, you could see all these layers that are handling these animations separately and the reason they are in different layers is because multiple animations can be played simultaneously and the way it plays it is using these parameters and I believe uh, the script changes or the input mappings changes these parameters and these parameters then affect the appropriate layer to play the animations. Alright, in order uh, for the controller helper to appropriately enable the right controller model, we have to mark the controller type to left or right. Also leave the uh, state to the same like controller in hand or not. No hand. That means if the controller is in hand, we want to enable the controller. Or in case there is no hand tracking, we also want to search for the controller. So that makes sense. So once you select that, and that's how we were used to enable the controllers in the old way. Now see what's the way of implementing it using the new building blocks. Okay, let's open up the Oculus building block menu, either from the top or from the bottom button. And once you click on them, what you should see are these individual features have been separated out into different blocks that we can use as per our need. We can also move this editor window and adjust it according to our need. Let's expand this to have a good view on all the available blocks. And from the very first, you, you, you could see some familiar blocks, for example, the camera rig, the pass through, the controller tracking, the hand tracking and so on. Each of these individual blocks do belong to different uh, namespace which can be seen from these names once you hover on them. You could also filter them out using the filter tags available on top. For example, we have this uh, core and pass through. Let's say if I want to select the pass through one from the core package, I can select core then pass through and it appears. 
which kinds of confuses uh, to me because core shouldn't be on the same level as a pass through it should be a parent level distinction but it's okay i think meta is going to do that then we have these experimental ones which i would say use them sparingly not use the, use them spare, sparingly and uh, be mindful about them okay let's delete the obr camera rig and we'll drag the newer camera rig from the building block and once you do you should see the building block camera rig appearing on the hierarchy and on the inspector you could see a new component for building block and each of the other scripts is same as what we had in the obr camera rig prefab so if i open up the obr camera rig you could see obr camera rig obr, OVR manager and obr emulator uh, component and if i minimize the OVR building block component on the building block camera rig every script you could see is same as the prefab the building block itself configures and manages the blocks automatically as we keep adding on them it also meant a keep track of the dependencies and used by to show what all things this module is dependent on and what all modules are dependent on this particular camera rig apart from that it also sets uh, the tracking type to flow level and uh, also sets the hand tracking type to be controller and hands expanding it uh, looks the same as of the camera rig prefab and each of if each of the other settings is as same uh, compared to the previous one only thing is the flow level is now set also if you are seeing multiple uh, building blocks on my machine and not on your machine it could be because uh, i am using the interaction sdk as well i have imported interaction sdk because i was creating these additional episodes for for this particular series on the channel and you could see that in the package manager so i have the metaxar in integration sdk ovr integration which downloads the interaction sdk as well and that introduces these additional building blocks which you are seeing on my machine so let's add the controller uh, building block and i will show you what happens so once i click on it it crashes my editor and that's why i was saying that these experimental features should should not be used sparingly and you need to be careful when using them on a production build so these are still in iterations and now it has crashed my unity let me open up unity again all the one thing is that it add, it added the uh it added the controller prefab so once added you can click on the camera rig and you can see these individual uh used by components for each of the controllers that means this particular camera rig is being used by both of these controllers if you scroll down you could see the hand tracking type is still set to controllers and hands but let's say if you want only to have controller enabled we can just to send it to controller and the app on search for uh the hands and on the each of these hand prefab we could see the dependencies are on camera rig which is again really nice to have on the building blocks and that's how we add and that's how simple it is to add the controller tracking onto the hierarchy much lesser steps compared to the older one so let's build it out and see it in action Before that let me rename the scene to an appropriate name. So always make sure to have the scene added and the texture compression leave it to be ETC2 uh, because it's compatible with OpenGL graphics library and let's build it out. Okay I'll see you once this this is built. All right this is built now we can drag and drop on Meta Quest Developer Hub. Okay let me show you the application in action from Oculus All right as you could see we are in the scene now and indeed we can see our controllers appearing in our hand and you could see it's it's selected the quest type and these were the animations i was talking about that you can move the joysticks 
and to show you we can i can click the a button the x button the b button the y button and each of the buttons work as it should be because these inputs are being passed as the parameters and those parameters change those animation layers to be played appropriately and you could see the controllers are not just going from 0 to 1 but it's also going the like keeping in the mid value as well and that's it now we have added our controllers using the new building blocks and you saw how easier that is now let's see how we can add the hand tracking all right let's open up the oculus building blocks menu again now this time from the top menu let's dock it again to the same position and search for hand tracking it is here just add it using the button once done it's been added to the respective left and right anchors and once you select one of them you should see the building blocks component saying that it's dependent on camera rig and there's a component called OVR hand where we have to select the appropriate hand type and it will automatically set the respective hand types on on the subsequent scripts also make sure the source state is set to controller not in hand that means we only want to show the hand tracking when the controller is not in our hand do the same for the right hand and the way it works uh, the hand is that the OVR hand script once set uh, it gets the data from the hand tracking pass it to the OBS skeleton uh, then the OBS skeleton uh, gets the skeleton types uh, using the script if I open up the OBS skeleton script just to show you that if you scroll down a little bit you should see all these individual bone type gets from the OBS data uh, we have the finger uh, positions then we have these body positions which is newly introduced which can uh, estimate the body pose and on top we have the finger positions and this is the part where it can approximate the fingertips which is used for hit collisions on canvas and then that data is passed on to the VR mesh which creates the mesh then the mesh renderer re renders the mesh and assign it, assigns this to a skin mesh renderer the skin mesh renderer then uses this material to render our hands so this material uses a different shader which was not working in the URP and that's the reason I had to create this video on a non-URP project. And once done, let's move to the camera rig. On top, indeed, it showed all the dependencies. And in the uh, hand tracking type, we have to select controller and hands and not controller as we selected before. So make sure you do that. The next thing you have to set is the frequency. Set it to high or max it doesn't matter once you select high it will automatically take max same for the controller type it it's set to version 2 by default it's set to version 2 even if you set to version 1 it will automatically override by version 2 and everything else leave it as it is one more thing uh, so sometimes it may not work on your machine is because once you add the oculus hand controls it should append these features and permissions onto the android manifest file So you could see the hand tracking permission as well as the feature. So the feature contains a flag, Android required flag. For now it's set to false and the only reason it's set to false is because we, we are enabling controller and hands and it's not required to always have the hand selected or enabled. Let's say if we go to the OVR camera rig and only change the tracking type to hands, Meta will automatically replace the required value to true. In the manifest file so that the, our application knows that we need to have hand tracking enabled otherwise the app won't work so we'll change it back to the controller and hand hands and let's give it a build and see it in action on the oculus all right before we uh, open our app let's enable the hand tracking go to privacy settings in the oculus settings and from here select device permissions and you should see the first option saying hand and body tracking enable the enable the toggle to the right and once you do complete this uh, setup wizard which will show you the basics of hand tracking so first we will disable our controller by just 
slightly tapping them together that will disable the controller mode and we have to place them upside down then follow up with the menu using the tap gesture or poke gesture and uh, just follow up with all of these tutorials one by one and you should be good to go we can also uh, open up a menu when you do hands upside down and face you you can use your pinch and select the menu you want to appear so once done click on continue and it will show you dialog it's done and it will show you all the apps that are available on store that utilizes hand tracking let's open up our app and see the hands tracking in action all right we can see the controller as it is all the animations buttons are working let's just dual tap them slightly so to make them visible and as soon as i did that see the hands appearing and yeah this <laughs> my controllers are on a slope hence they are re-enabling again but you could see all the hands it it moves all the fingers come on controllers yeah don't ruin the demo all right you could see all the fingers been correctly tracked you can also use the same menu as we saw in the hand tracking uh, demo you can use the poke gesture and it feels really natural to be honest and this is how we set up the controllers and hand tracking using building blocks from meta xr core sdk within unity 3d which is much simpler than before I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. If you enjoyed this tutorial and are eager to explore more of the VR development content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also make sure you hit the sub subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on notifications to stay updated with all of my upcoming tutorials. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Keep coding, keep creating and I will catch you in the next Game5D tutorial. Happy developing.